I'm on my way to downtown Harrisburg. There's a couple of YouTubers in town. Just got a text message and they're having lunch at a restaurant. I'm going to try to meet up with them. Uh, never met these guys before. Should be interesting. This is my first meet up with other YouTubers and uh, always good to talk shop with somebody else that's doing a similar thing than what you're doing. So let's see how it goes. This is my first time shooting with other YouTubers in the uh, vicinity. So this is a, a new experience for me. It's, it's easy to be distracted with the process. <laughs> that, that's the process. <laughs> I was thinking about that yesterday and uh, the history I have in film and photography. I started shooting still photography in 1970. When this, uh, no, actually it was 72. I lived right here on Front Street, right along the river, and it was during this, the 72 flood that came up, uh, what they call it, the 100 year flood here, and I didn't have a camera to document it, and all I saw was pictures everywhere. So that's really what got me into it, it was more from the journalistic uh, point of view. I uh, went to college, paid for my entire school bill, one 8 by 10 black and white at a time for $10 a piece paid my entire school bill with my camera. Moved back to Harrisburg from college and uh, became a photographer for the Associated Press. You, film work, I started with an eight millimeter film camera in college. I had a class in filmmaking. And we you had to hand cut it and glue it together for your editing. And um, well, I hadn't thought about that for a long time. Uh, I'm not sure what the word is, but the, the essence of photography is the image. Some people get in it because they love the equipment or the technology. Uh, that, there's a place for that. You can't separate the two. You can't do photography without the equipment. But what gets me going is the, is the aesthetic image, uh, the beauty of the image, the lines, the composition, the color, the texture. Uh, that's, that's what gets me going. So. 25-ish right now. You are? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. How long has it taken you to get there? <laughs> long time. Uh, I started making videos in 2013 and we were kind of on and off. I did maybe about 70 videos before April of this year and we had about 30 subscribers from 2013 all the way until April of this year. Then in April something happened and it sparked and we started getting some growth. What happened? <laughs> I think the big thing that happened was I was more involved with the community and people actually um, like engaging and interacting with other people and trying to find out what other creators were doing and things like that. So um, being able to create a community that was like all excited about each other's work was part of what happened and then I got to, through that process, meet up with um, Cody and find Cody. No Small Creator. If you're wondering what this is, this is a light reflector which I brought out thinking I might need it or use it but we haven't yet. So. <laughs> like I was telling earlier, I just run and gun so I have a lot of equipment like that because I've done more traditional film and I've done it professionally as well but um, recording a five-year-old running around like crazy, trying to capture everything. I kind of treat it more documentary style where I just have my camera and I try to capture the moment as it goes. Um, there's a lot of awesome creators and I do it sometimes where you actually adjust the aperture and the f-stop and the um, ISO to be like this shallow depth of field and things like that but being able to create something that's happening and it's only going to happen once it's kind of tough to do that so I like break all the rules that everybody says you should be shooting this way to be cinematic so I shoot at a really high ISO Hi then collapse how would you do that what would be your game plan to uh, well um I just did what I call uh, phase one, which phase one was getting to meet and networking with all kinds of small YouTube channels and creators and figuring out where people go to network. And so I've, in three months, I've accomplished that 10 times better than my expectation of what could possibly happen. Really? I mean, I've exceeded my, yeah. And, then that, oh. and subscribers and? 
in terms of uh, how fast the channel's growing, not just subscribers, but like all the metrics, like in terms of uh, act, um, engagement and yeah. commenters, and mm -hmm. um, it's just been I've really quickly assembled a really good network of small YouTube channels that are are all hooked into each other. Shot a truck show this weekend, and walking through the the grounds, you got vendors. And you got the people are selling food, selling trucks, selling parts, selling everything and anything you can imagine. Everybody's got an objective, everybody's got an agenda. And I'm there with an agenda. I'm there to find photography. But I found out, I'm finding that when you're in an environment, when every, when the, when the river direction <laughs> is all going one, one way and you're going another, it's so hard to stay focused. I'm in YouTube now trying to do something with my channel. My focus is not YouTube, mm -hmm. it's photography, and more specific, it's the image of photography. And to keep that focus is so, so challenging to stay focused on what your objective is. And, uh, if I got my name on the credits on a movie and that'd be like the highlight of my career, and then I achieved that and was like, well, what's next? <laughs> There's always something next and no matter what level you get, you're always kind of like, you reach that and usually you kind of have thrown away that dream by the time you got there. So like, you are working so hard towards it and then you forget to actually celebrate it. That's something that on my channel I've been trying to do a little bit more of. Like when we hit 100 subscribers, I specifically made a celebration video for that because um, it was a goal for a really long time. It took us years to reach that. And um, it should be something that's celebrated, I think. And um, also just like looking at little things that you're improving on and that you've ch chosen to do and stylistically as well because when I look back at my early videos I'm like wow that was bad <laughs> and sometimes I thought okay that was kind of good but then when I look at better it's like if I were to do that today it'd be much different and better now but it's a whole process and you're always learning it I think. And here at the Harrisburg train station we're going to do a little photo treasure hunting tonight. Uh, come along and let's take a walk, see what we can find. says here this train station was built in 1885 to 1887. There's the original picture. Let's see. I see a nice little still life right here with this fire hydrant and these lights. So far, so good. I decided to go square on the, uh, the end cap here. And right now my camera's down here, but I'm gonna move it up here so I can't do a little bit better. I got something I like there on that end cap. But uh, now I'm going to turn more towards the uh, corner side here and uh, maybe, maybe even use the trash can as part of the composition see what we get. Just saw another image. Can you see these highlights right here on this bench? Those two white lines going down. Those are leading lines. Uh, excellent for picture composition. So there's a shot here. I don't know if I can get it or not, but keep working at it. See what I get. This is a short video today uh, here at the Harrisburg train station and uh, just wanted to go through the process of what it takes to go out somewhere where you haven't been before or been to very little 
and come back with images that has some composition, has some what I call pictureability to them, uh, a good composition that has some some value to it. So take a look, see what you think, and uh, let me know. Enjoy, subscribe, hit the like button. See you next video.